Okay. So um, we are here today reading uh, Encountering God Through Dance with the author, Sarah Tina. And um, she has written a couple books. And um, the first one is all about her experience. And the second is about um, leading in the dance. And um, we're very excited to have her here. And I guess we could start talking about your stuff. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> hey, so good to meet you all. I'm excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, when I heard that, um, that we were going to be able to meet you, I was so excited because I got um, your book for Christmas last year, actually, from my oh, husband. Wow. I wouldn't have ever, like, get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Um, so I guess the first thing, um, I noticed I, I was going to ask anybody else that comes in too, if they, um, felt any similarities in your story to theirs, just in the journey of becoming a dancer. Cause as I was reading your book, it was like crazy. Like all, all of your life experience, like little parts that I could take mm -hmm. off. Me too, me too. <laughs> like, um, you're, um. You became a Christian fairly young. How, how old were you when you accepted Jesus? Well, I, so I grew up in a Christian family. And uh, so I, I can't actually like remember a specific time when I gave my life to Jesus. Because as far as I can remember, I always loved Jesus. I'm, I'm sure I like asked him to come to my heart several times, <laughs> like just to make sure I've done it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I honestly, like, I don't remember a time when I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. So I, in some ways, like got to, uh, got to grow up with him. Uh, and like, kind of, obviously there was a moment when I knew that the faith, it wasn't just my parents, but I, I have a personal relationship with him. Yeah. But uh, it has been a privilege to grow up in a family where my parents love Jesus too. And, you know, I got to know him. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be more gradual if you're yeah. born. I, my parents became Christians when I was six or when I was five. And so I have more of a, I have a little bit of memory of when stuff started to change, you know? Yeah. And uh, I thought it was interesting that your first um, interaction with dance was more like a kid's choreography, hand, hand motion. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that was, that was very similar too. I loved how you said something along the lines of like, that's when you realized that that was something that you loved, you know, worshiping with your body. That was, I loved that. Um, yeah. So, and you did a lot of that. How many years did you do uh, choreography with, it was like a YWAM kids group? Yeah, it was called King's Kids uh, at the time. Um, I and it it started when I was I think I was around twelve. Um, I was part of like a competitive training team in gymnastics. And <laughs> all these little girls, like they started asking me questions about Jesus, and and then they all wanted to get saved, which is amazing. So I, I got to like lead them all to Jesus, and and then some of their whole families, like their parents, wanted to received Jesus as well and and that's when like my family and a couple of the other local families they were like we need to do something with these kids like you know so they start growing in their faith and and so we started the King's Kids Ministry locally in my hometown when I was 12 and I I did it all the way till I was like uh 18 or 19 when I graduated from high school and um so we had both like a local ministry so we did a lot of uh like we use creative arts, we choreographed our own dances and we went to all like local schools and, and just did like all kinds of, like we went to shopping centers and, and at that time, like even like all like primary schools were super open. So we could just go anywhere and, and share the gospel and, and we got to see just a lot of kids encounter Jesus. And, and right. then every summer I also traveled with different teams to other countries and we did like mission trips to other places and, um, so that's pretty much my whole like junior high and high school. But I was very involved in that. 
Yeah. Well, and I did, I, I happened to catch um, a choreographed thing you did with some of the kids at Bethel a little while ago too. And that was, that was wonderful with the, you had the, in the back and all the kids doing their little parts and yeah. <laughs> I just saw it on YouTube, but that, um, yeah, do you, um, you seem to have a very wide, um, understanding and, and appreciation for different aspects of dance and worship and in the book that kind of came out like choreographed versus in the moment and trained versus not trained like um do you want to talk a little bit more about yeah. that yeah <laughs> I think um so I mean at the moment I'm so I'm pastoring all the dancers in our school of ministry and I have about like 420 dancers as part of the dance community and about 90% have never danced before. And then maybe about 10% are like very well-trained uh, dancers in, in all different dance styles. And, um, and I actually, I love the combination of being able to bring people together because uh, um, I think we can always learn so much from one another and, um, and often like trained dancers, if they have never been dancing in worship or done any like, you know, free expression, um, they can learn a lot from a person who's like connecting with the Lord, but doesn't have training and, uh, and kind of help them to get out of their box, like how it has to look like. And then at the same time, the trained dancers can help the other ones who don't have training so much in like all like basic things like spatial awareness and, and finding the alignment for the body and so uh, I just, I love being able to combine those two groups. And um, yeah. and I also like, I often, so we talk about the concept of prophetic dance. And I personally, like, I really dislike it when, when people say like, oh, is prophetic dance the same as spontaneous dance? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> like uh, it, just that the person dances like prophetically or, or spontaneously, that doesn't make it prophetic. Um, because I think oftentimes when person does their own spontaneous dance, it's just, you know, it's their own emotions, it's their own like communication, what they carry, it just comes out when they start moving, they start expressing themselves. Um, and sometimes it's just people's own mess. <laughs> and, and I just don't like when people label that like that's the prophetic dance. I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, it can be prophetic. And I think so what makes it prophetic is if we are actually connected with the Holy Spirit and and we are we are communicating something from God's heart as we're moving and and in the same way like when somebody has choreographed a dance piece like just that it's choreographed doesn't make it prophetic or not prophetic like it's it's an expression uh, and it communicates something but but it can totally be prophetic as well uh, if it's created from that place that the person has been actually listening to God's heart and is expressing something that's that's from his heart through that movement so um i think that's often a concept that gets a little uh confusing to people and uh, like here like with my students we do a whole lot of spontaneous things so i'm yeah. like one of my main goal goals with my students is to help them to learn how to connect with the holy spirit and and then express express his heart and also their own heart to god with movement um and we do like occasionally we also do choreograph things like i uh typically have been choreographing something for our school of creativity and and for those like performance pieces we audition people according to the style that we are creating the dance with so um but then then again like i feel like there is a time and a place for everybody to express their heart to the lord uh, with movement and so it's not just for the trained dancers but I, I believe there's so much we can all experience and um and even this year like we started school like in September and I'm already like hearing so many testimonies from the students who like some of them who have never danced before and it's like all age groups I think the youngest ones in a school of ministry are like 17 or 18 and and the oldest ones are in their seventies, <laughs> and uh, and just seeing like how how God is like in such a tangible way encountering them, and 
I just like as a as a pastor and as a leader, like it's that brings so much joy to my heart to be able to like just lead people into that place where they get to encounter God and and get to be surprised. Like I didn't know that I can hear from God, and <laughs> and I think often the physical movement like uh, just helps them to connect and. Um, yeah, so I, I just love that whole process uh, to get to lead people in that. And yeah. <laughs> can, sorry, can I ask a question to you? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But I think that that was, um, that was a, I loved your, what you said about prophetic and, and freestyle. So how do you bring, so you have a whole bunch of people that, new dancers that want to have an expression of God. So your, your book is called um, Encountering God Through Dance. Mm -hmm. When, can, so can you explain what the difference between encountering God through dance and, and how that's not prophetic or how is, are you saying that is prophetic? Um, so I guess my understanding of prophetic is when you encounter God, like that's the conversation. Yeah. Good question. Um, I think first of all, like just to um, kind of clarify, like I, I think so when we talk about like worship dance, prophetic dance, intercessory dance, like I don't think we can necessarily put things into a box like this is just that and this is just that. And it's kind of the same as, you know, in a corporate worship setting. Sometimes when we when we worship through songs, so we go through like we start with praise and worship, and and sometimes we go into making declarations, and it, it becomes more intercession into in certain areas, and then it can be prophetic worship that we start declaring things from God's heart, and so it's not like this is only one thing, and it has to be that one thing. Like I think the same way in dance, like there's several different layers and aspects that we go through, and uh. And uh, it's it's not so like, <laughs> yeah, like you, you, you can't put it into like draw so clear lines like this is just that. But I think when I specifically, like if I talk about prophesying through dance, then it's not just me expressing my worship to the Lord, but it also includes that I'm actually listening to his heart. Like what what is his heart for this moment? And what is he like, even if I'm, if I'm leading a team for corporate worship set, I always tell the students like, Hey, like you will, like you will get personal breakthroughs as you're worshiping, but we are not the focus now. Like we are actually here to help people to encounter God and lead people uh, into an encounter. And, and in that sense, we are constantly listening. Like what, what is God wanting to do? Uh, what is God wanting to say? Um, and obviously we're partnering with the worship team and, and listening to what they are hearing God say in the moment and where they are leading the room. But then the students will have like their own breakthroughs in getting more freedom and all that stuff, but that's not the focus. Like we are not, not just concerned what's going on in my heart or, you know, like sometimes dancers are like, Oh, that's my favorite song. Can I dance to that? And we're like, no, actually it's not about what's my favorite song or what I'm feeling. Like sometimes it could be like, you know, somebody feels like it's a favorite song, but, but it actually feels like in the room that, that there's such an intimate moment that it would be more distracting to send somebody to move right then and we choose to hold back. Or it could be the opposite that, you know, maybe the worship team is uh, like seeing something in the spirit, like they're wanting to lead the room into this place of celebration, but it feels completely dead in the room. And, um, and maybe my dancers don't feel like dancing either but we choose to partner with the worship team and in what they are hearing and we choose to step in. And, and I mean, that's, that's kind of more like rare example. I, I hardly ever have moments when my dancers don't feel like dancing because they do because just, you know, they would love to dance all the time. But, um, but I think often if there was a moment that people didn't feel it, it's when they step out and, and, you know, uh, start, partnering with the Holy Spirit, that's when the feelings come to and they, they actually get into it more. And, um, but I think the whole like, uh, perspective, like we are here to serve and are we here to help people and lead people to encounter God and, and be tuned into what, what is on his heart in that specific moment. So like, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about prophetic dance in that sense. And, and also like sometimes we specifically like with, 
with some of the teams that minister in the healing room. So uh, our heart is obviously like we, we, we use dance as a prayer language as well. So we, we pray for people mm -hmm. for all kinds of things that, you know, whether it's physical or, or, or emotional thing that needs healing. But at the same time, like we are asking the Lord, like, is there something on your heart that you want to uh, express to this person? And, and then we often, we often first dance. And, and I have discovered that so many times, like it's, uh, it's not so much that, like I first get a word and then I somehow try to act it out or dance it out. But it's more, more often that I just start moving and I just welcome the Holy Spirit and I, I invite him to come into the process. And, and I notice that I'm doing certain movements. And uh, let's say that I start doing some really like strong movements. I'm like, oh, like I feel like God is saying that he's wanting to bring a breakthrough into this area. And so I get the kind of the interpretation after I've done the movement. And, and I, I think that's for me, like what, what makes it so like fun and exciting that we actually get to hear God's heart for, for the person. And, and even like we have had moments like last year, uh, like very, my, my dancers, like they got very specific things for people. Like there was, um, uh, one gentleman we were, for example, like ministering to, I think he came from Argentina and initially, like when we were ministering to him, like it felt like it was so hard to find, find a connection and he just wasn't receiving. And, um, one of my dancers stopped and she's like, as I was moving, like I got this number, like series of not series of numbers in my mind, and she's like, "Does this number mean anything to you?" And just says this random number, and this man starts crying, and he's like, "That's actually my ex-wife's phone number," oh. and uh, and then like we got to like minister like healing to his heart, and and he had just like been thinking of like wanting to reconnect, and. And then right after that, it was actually one of our children on the children's team was like, oh, do you also have something wrong with your wrist and something in your belly? And he's like, yep, those are the two things why I came here. Like I, I need healing in my arm and I, I need healing in my like stomach. And, and they got to pray for him. And um, so the children prayed and, and all the pain disappeared. But it was like that initial like word of knowledge that the dancer got when she was dancing that really opened his heart. and. And I think God often uses like uh, uses prophetic in that sense that people people get the revelation like God sees me and He cares for me and He knows every detail of my life and and that opens their heart to like fully receive His love and receive His goodness and so uh, so in that sense like if I talk about prophetic like I think that's when we are like really connecting what's going on in God's heart and how do we express that to the person rather than me just expressing my worship and my thankfulness to him as I move, which is amazing and powerful and needed as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I think there's, there's so much more for all of us to learn about, like how do we actually get God's heart to other people as we minister and, you know, as we dance. So. Do you find that that's been a very um, misunderstood expression in, like, in, I mean, you go to Bethel, so you're attending Bethel, which is very open to the whole, the moving of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I know that just watching you travel, where you're going, you're getting a lot more invitations. But do you find that that dance still has resistance in in the majority of, of Christian churches and um, the expression, uh, the acceptable expression of worship? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we have come a long way. <laughs> First of all, like, I think I, so I grew up in a conservative Lutheran church. And uh, so I actually grew up being, like, being told that all dance is sin. So I was not allowed to dance at all. And now, like, when I go back home for visits, like it's typically the Lutheran churches that invite me to come and teach that they are actually really hungry and, and they are wanting to learn and, and they are wanting to grow. And so I've seen like massive change in that. And I have got to dance in some like bigger like cathedrals where when I was a kid, I would have never dreamt like being able to go and actually dance there. So I, I feel like there is like, 
it's something that God, God really is breathing on. And, and also like, I feel like it's like, this wasn't my idea and it's not something I'm trying to like force uh, people to accept. I'm like, this was God's idea to begin with. And, and it's his ministry and, and it's created to bring pleasure to his heart. But, but it is true that uh, I think, I think it's, partly because dance has been like in many ways misused and so people haven't had like experiences where they actually get to see what god can do with dance that's yielded to him and uh dance that's glorifying him so that has created walls in a lot of places and um and also like i think that was that was a huge part why I wanted to write my books was to help to get some, like some, some understanding for people who have only ever seen dance used in ways that's not glorifying God and, um, and helping them to have a grit for like, how, how can dance actually be helping people to encounter God rather than doing the opposite. And, but it definitely like, I, I do like, I, I think I have experienced that in, in a lot of places that it is pioneering and, and like learning to be okay with the fact that like, not everybody gets this and it's not my, my goal in life to try to make everybody to get it. Or, you know, I, I need to stay faithful to what God has called me to do. And, and, you know, I don't need to worry about all the people who may not actually understand it or may not get it. And that that's okay. Like I, <laughs> I don't need to try. That's, that's not my fight or, you know, what would you tell what would you tell young worshipers or young dancers who like you like I love how in your book you actually describe some of that your the background that you weren't allowed to dance and that you the only acceptable thing was gymnastics which I grew up in a in a Mennonite culture and we just don't dance at all and yeah the only way that I could move my body was through gymnastics so I was also yeah. Love that testimony because I could relate to that. But what do you tell? So, what do you tell people that are maybe cut, like the call of God on their life to move, or or they've never felt, they've never felt like um, ex their expression to God was not acceptable. And so, how do you? What do you tell those hearts that that need to hear God's redeeming this? Yeah, I, um, like, I, I don't think there's only one way, like, how God is redeeming it. I think God is doing several, like, moving in so many beautiful ways, and there's a lot of layers to that, but, uh, but I think probably the first thing I would say is to really trust him in the process, that he makes a way uh, for the things that are on his heart, and, um, and even like not having to feel the pressure that you have to try to make, make a way or you have to try to make other people understand. Um, I think there's a place to, to also like educate and, and help the body of Christ to understand it, but not having to take the wrong kind of responsibility. Um, and I would like, I would encourage people to like, find other people who are like-minded and I, I love what you're doing like connecting people with each other and um and even like I I often like I recommend people to just start having like class uh where you invite people who want to learn to express and rather than feeling like oh we need to have like the platform or we need to be able to have dancers leading worship right away like first just like hey can we can we grow in this together and and even like with my dancers in BSSM, like I always tell them that the goal for the dance community that we have, it's, it's not to put everybody on stage. Uh, like that's the goal is for us to grow in how can we actually connect with God through movement. And, and some of them don't even ever want to be on stage and there's no pressure. I do give them like everybody who comes to my classes, I give them an opportunity to try it out at least once throughout the school year because the school is meant to be a place of learning but but that's not like the end goal and also like that there's so many I feel like in dance there are so many different types of callings like some people may be called into working with children in dance and some people may be called like specifically into performing arts and and into like the dance industry and 
uh, which requires completely different like <laughs> training and preparation and um, and like you know you actually have to study dance technique if you want to be a performing artist and but if you're called to work with children it may not make sense to like take technique classes 30 hours a week like you may, might need some other training too to work with children and or some people might be might have a calling to be intercessors and uh, you don't even dan need to dance in front of people like you call to connect with the lord in a secret place and just use it as, as a tool for you to express and or some people may have a specifically like heart for healing ministry like we have we have dancers in the healing rooms who like feel like that is actually their main calling is to be praying for the sick and, and praying through movement as well and and just uh yeah connecting with god in that environment and uh, so I feel like there's just so many different pockets. Like I think often people like uh, kind of feel like they don't qualify as a dancer unless they have some platform where they dance on stage. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's a lie. Like you can totally have, have a calling from the Lord to be a dance minister and never dance on stage. <laughs> like it's, that that's, it's not about that, but, um, and even like, I think churches that don't, don't, maybe they are not in a place where it could be practically speaking that there's no not enough space to have dancers in worship or it could be that they just you know uh haven't quite figured how that could spiritually fit into what they are doing like i think that that should never be a thing that stops us like you know god always finds a way i feel like it's like a stream that moves like water that always finds a way to flow somewhere when we partner with the lord and um, and also like, because I, I know that God loves them so much that it, it brings so much pleasure to his heart that he always, always, always finds a way, um, to get that expression and, and it may be different in different seasons too. And, um, and then just, you know, um, seeking the Lord, like, what, what do you want to do through dance in this season? And, and not even like, I think sometimes we make the mistake of like being like, I my dance looks like this and I'm not gonna do anything else like unless it looks like this and uh and realizing like no like we actually have to grow and and when we are in the church context like we need to honor where our leaders are wanting to take us and and we need to be like team players in that as as well like you know that we we find out like how can we serve serve the communities how can we serve our, our leaders by the way how we do ministry and I, I sometimes I, I share a silly example of uh like even at Bethel like we get sometimes like different <laughs> different worship teams that come to lead here and and I remember one time like there was a team worship team from uh Australia I don't know if you guys heard of Planet Shakers but they are a little bit more like a hardcore style and and they, they came like in they like leather pants and and kind of they sang more like more hardcore songs like it was there was more like screaming and like that sort of a thing and we were there like our dance team was there like wearing our pretty dresses and we're like this is not gonna work together like that we're gonna look ridiculous if we're gonna go on stage like this and but instead of being like oh no that's not us like we are not gonna we can't do this we actually we ran upstairs to our studio and we changed our clothes into something that was more relatable like i mean we didn't get leather pants but <laughs> but we got, we got some like more plain like i think we got like just some black sweatpants and black t-shirts and something that was more like connecting to their style and it turned into this amazing time where the worship leader came and danced with us and we had this like really fun dance party and they felt the holy spirit we felt the holy spirit and and it was because we were willing to be like flexible in that like hey like we're here to serve like we are not just gonna be like we stick to our way and it has to be like this and um so i i, I think it's totally fine to have your own preferences and and even like at bethel like we we have some dancers who love using flags and we use often silks when we dance and um and i have both like flaggers and dancers on my teams and um so there's a lot of variety, but then also figuring out like some churches, like it's either a space question or they just don't like flags. So not feeling like it has to be this way 
otherwise I'm not going to do anything. Like learning to be like, okay, I want to honor what you are asking me from now. And, and maybe also like, you know, we can introduce new things and, and help them to, to have good experiences if they've seen something that has like maybe brought some concerns for them. Like I've been in places where they tell me like black girls have hit people in the head and they got injuries. And I'm like, the answer is not to not have them at all, but like, how can we do it in a way that nobody's going to get hurt? And you know, because nobody like appreciates a mad chaos. And, and I think that's often what has made churches to kind of, want to stop dance ministry that his it has turned into something that's way too chaotic and and like kind of the same way as um uh, like i don't think people would ever feel the right to like jump up on stage and bring their own instrument and just start randomly playing at the same time when the worship team is playing so like teaching the dancers to like hey like you actually you need to be part of a team and you need to be blessed into this ministry and and obviously, like, sometimes there can be times when, and I love it, when, like, they encourage everybody to dance. And, and even at school, like, we have days when we call them freedom days that we invite, like, whoever wants to come on stage, like, just come and dance. And, but then that's more about the personal breakthrough of a person who is, like, stepping out. And it's not so much that they are on a team that's ministering to the class. So I think helping, helping to build some... Uh, like I like it's kind of like a I like using the term wine skin. Like it's like a wine skin that holds the wine, holds the presence and what the Lord is already doing. And uh so that it doesn't splash everywhere and <laughs> just cause stains and you know, that we are it's not a structure for the sake of having a structure, but it's a structure to help to hold what the Lord is doing and um yeah, so uh trying to find ways how we can how we can carry God's presence in a way that it doesn't turn into a chaos or mess and something that the leaders start feeling really fearful about. And, you know, yeah. um, that was actually the reason why I wrote my second book, the dance pastor, because I was like, I think we need some practical tools, like how to, <laughs> how to help churches who are very scared. Like what could this turn into, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Um, when you said that um, to not stay in a, in a box of like, this is the way I dance and this is it. And for me, um, flags were, were that for me because I, I was like afraid of hitting somebody in the head. I was like, I, I, I don't need. And so it was one of those, I think God was inviting me to flag. And then, and then once I finally said yes, like everything started happening, <laughs> you know? But um, so do you, uh, with flags, have you always kind of incorporated them or do you have a point that you can look at and be like, and this is when I started using flags more? Yeah, actually I never used any flags or any silks before I came to Bethel. So there was a very clear point that I, it's actually a funny <laughs> story when I, my very first time using a silk was in our like Sunday night service. And we used to dance like right in front of the worship team and it was all streamed. And there were only a couple of us on the team. And uh, uh, I remember being so nervous. And the lady who was leading, she just gave me this silk. I was like, go. And I was too shy to tell her, like, I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go away with that. But it really turned into, like, such a powerful encounter for me. Like, I felt the presence of God. Uh, in Like, it was like the silk became an extension of my movement. and. Yeah. And I like ever since like I actually love loved using silks, but I um with flax, I think I I think I still I'm I'm more cautious to I have to confess, I actually have never so far never flagged with like the traditional type of stick flag. And that's been more like personal preference. Like I feel like it's it's so stiff for me that I, I find it hard to find movement. But I have, I don't know if you guys have um, heard of a ministry called Call to Flag. They are pay, based in Canada, uh, uh, David and Claire, uh, who like they, they create their own flags. And so I, um, they introduced me to the quill flags, which are like this, like a bendy metal thing inside mm -hmm. of the flag. And when they like, they kind of, uh, they gave me a couple of pairs. That's, I don't even remember, maybe like three or four years ago. And uh, 
and I absolutely loved them because I felt like it, it fit my style of expressing. So now, now I have like a whole bunch of those and I absolutely love using them. And, and I still like, I have a whole bunch of like the traditional style of stick flex too, because like some dancers prefer them. And, and especially I think in our men's team, I have, I have a lot of guys now in BSSM who are also wanting to dance and, and okay. also in the healing rooms, I think we have like 11 men who are um, part of the team. And, and often the guys feel like this, the stick is like <laughs> more masculine and, and they like <laughs> go on with those. And, and it's so powerful. Like I love watching it when other people do it. And, uh, and obviously like, you know, I just talked about being flexible. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not like something that I've been like, I never do that. Like, you know, there might be a time when I, if God tells me, I'll, I mean, I obviously go anytime, but, but I feel like there's still like, there is freedom for personal preferences. And, and even like with my dancers, I, I tell them like, you know, I don't, I don't want you to ever feel like you have to do something like you have your own voice. And, um, but then at the same time, like in order for us to work as a team. So sometimes, um, like I, like for example, like right now in the beginning, when I'm starting to activate the first year students. So I asked them before we start the worship set, like, Hey, who is comfortable with flags? And if there is anybody who is not, let me know before worship starts. So then when I have to make quick decisions, then I won't be pushing somebody who is like freaking out about holding a flag. <laughs> so I think there is the pastoral side too, like helping people. And, and I understand that because of my, you know, I have my own preferences as well. But at the same time, like sometimes like we need to step outside of our comfort zone in order to encounter God in that place. And so staying open for that, but then at the same time, like not forcing people, like allowing Holy Spirit to lead them in the process rather than me, like making them do things that they are totally uncomfortable doing. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, the flex flags I hadn't tried those either yet and I just got one from Andrea and I, I like it it is it's got a you can move a little bit slower with them I think like so if you like to dance I think it gives you a little bit more time to move almost is how it feels like yeah. <laughs> yeah there's all kinds of different like sizes some of them are like really long and some of them are shorter and and different ministries also like have like different levels of stiffness like the ones that I ordered from call to flag they are quite bendy like they actually move a whole ton and then I have some friends who have ordered from some other places so they are much more stiff and so I think a lot of that it is just a question of preference like what what do people like um but then I've been in in churches where they are like, "Hey, we would like you to dance, but we don't want to use flags." So then I'm like, "Oh, that's totally fine. Like, you know, don't have to use them. <laughs> like, I I can use them. Sometimes people prefer them. So, um, I think just always staying in that place of honor and love and like wanting to wanting to serve people where they are at and, um, yeah, rather than trying to force my way over them." <laughs> yeah um another thing i loved how um you you had a time where you were like didn't necessarily consider yourself a dancer and like the, just the part that you are like a trained gymnast <laughs> you still feel that way it was really encouraging to me oh. like but she was so flexible and she was still <laughs> like nope <laughs> so when did um I know you talk about that a little bit in the, in the book, um, about, um, when you started to have that conversation with God more about that he did want to use you that way, <laughs> that transition. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, did you want me to share about that or what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, can you please expand upon that, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I think it disconnected for a bit, so I, I couldn't hear you for a little bit. Um, um, 
yeah, like I, I think for me, like my journey was that I, so I had kind of laid down the gymnastics because I, so I was part of the national team in Finland. So I trained a whole ton in gymnastics and then, um, well, uh, yeah, after, after my first year in high school, I, I felt so drawn into two directions because I was very actively involved with ministry and doing the whole King's Kids thing. And, and so many times, like we ended up having our competition trips at the same time when I had a mission trip and I, it just felt like this pull to two directions. And, and I, I remember it was one summer I wanted to go on a mission trip to, um, to Florida actually. And, uh, I, the mission trip was like for a whole month. And my coach told me like, no, that's way too long. You can't go. And, um, and I basically told him like, you know what? Like I'm, I need to go because I feel like God is telling me to go. So I'm just going to lay down gymnastics and I'm just going to stop competing, which he obviously totally wasn't expecting that. And, uh, and I, <laughs> and it was a hard decision for me too, because I love gymnastics so much, but, um, I, and I think in some ways I also like misunderstood what God was saying. Like I, I thought it was time to like lay down all this creativity and I'm like, I'm going to become a missionary and I'm going to like, you know, <laughs> just, you know, go to a Bible school and study the word and then do missions. And I want to see people saved and set free. And, uh, but even though I, I had seen God use creativity in that, Somehow I thought like that was like for my teenage years and now I done that thing and now I'm going to be like a real missionary afterwards. And that's when I, like I moved to Norway to, to do like a, it's called DTS, like a discipleship training school with youth with a mission. And, and that's when I thought like, I'll, now I'm becoming real missionary and I laid down all this creative stuff. And, um, and that's when God started very like clearly speaking to me, like, now is your time to dance. And I'm like, excuse me? Like, what do you mean? Like, I, I thought I came to Bible school. And, uh, <laughs> and also, like, at that point, I had never, like, uh, danced spontaneously. I had only done the choreographed things. And I had never, like, really... I mean, we did some gymnastics when we did the choreographed pieces, but I had never, like, kind of made the connection that gymnastics could have anything to do with my future or dance. And... Uh, and I, I remember when I was arguing with God, which is never a great idea. <laughs> you, you don't always win. Uh, never win, actually. But I, I was just saying, like, I'm not a dancer. And like, you know, I have no idea what to do. Like, I, you know, and, and I remember he so clearly just spoke to my heart and said, like, you're a worshiper. And if you let me, I will teach you how to use your body as an instrument of worship. And, and that's when I, like, actually started experiencing God's presence in such a powerful way. And I, I share the story in my book. Like I, you know, I locked my bedroom door, closed the curtains so nobody could see me and just turn on some worship music and, and actually just invited God to start teaching me. And, and then I started noticing that in that process, like God started like pulling from the gymnastics as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is so much better than I could have ever imagined. And, and also realizing like God doesn't waste anything. Like all the training that I had done, it was, wasn't for nothing. Like, and even still today, like I'm so thankful for the gymnastics that I, I got to do. And, and even though like, you know, in dance, like in some ways you have to unlearn some things from gymnastics, like your posture is often very different from like dance technique and all of that. But, but for me, like it's been a massive blessing and benefit and, and even like, I, I still occasionally like, I love doing like, you know, when, when there is a moment that God is highlighting it, like, and I, I, I never, I mean, I would never go to worship set thinking like, oh, today I'm going to do flips. <laughs> but sometimes like when the Holy Spirit comes, it just happens. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously like I, you have to learn to be sensitive to God in those moments because you know obviously we don't want worship times to turn into a circus that you know like it's not about doing cool tricks but I believe that sometimes there's such a power and anointing when uh when God is leading us into something like that and I actually like I have specific testimonies from people like I remember this one lady came to me in one said I did some sort of a crazy flip or chomp thing and 
And I like, I was like shocked afterwards that I did it. Uh, and this lady comes to me and she's like, you know, my, my knee got healed when you did that jump thing. And I, I was the one who was more skeptical. I'm, I was like, are you, are you sure? Like, what do you mean? And, and, and that, cause she was actually, I didn't see her until like a week after that worship set. And she's like, she almost got angry with me. She's like, I just told you I got healed. Like my knee is still totally healed. And she's like, I specifically felt the power of God hit my knee right at that moment when you jumped. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like I had never heard of such a thing, but I'm like, you know, God is so outside of the box. Like he can, he can do whatever he wants to. And, and clearly he sometimes is wanting to use crazy things like that. And so obviously it's not like, there's no, not some like secret moves that carry the anointing, like learn to do a backflip and knee gets hit. Like it's, it's not about that, but it's about my connection with his heart and, and then learning to uh, be in that place of being sensitive to how is he leading me in that moment. And um, yeah. And then just following, following him. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so God can totally do, use gymnastics as well. And I, yeah. I love it when he does and and we don't always have a whole lot of space. And obviously you have to be wise in how you are using the space so you don't kick people and hurt people. But, but <laughs> also like sometimes when we have our like school of creativity, when we, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes we choreograph like specific pieces. And I think it was two years ago, I, I choreographed this piece that had a whole ton of gymnastics. Like it started with like these handstands and like just moving legs, doing different things. And, and then it had all these different flips and, and it was obviously the stage was set up in a way that we had a whole bunch of room and, and that, that performance was also recorded. It was actually probably found in YouTube. Um, and, uh, I, I got so many testimonies afterwards, even people who just saw the YouTube video who had powerful encounters with the Lord, like just by watching the recording. So, uh, I know. I know there's so much in that and I, um, I'm also like in a place of wanting to explore more or, and see more what God, God has through all kinds of like different ways of expressing things physically as well. And yeah. <laughs> and I think also like learning to be like, what's, what's fitting, uh, like being sensitive to the church environment. Like for example, like, school of creativity for us it's the place where we actually invited to try new things and they want us to go after things like that and uh like if i would do something like that in our main service i don't know how that would necessarily go down even though i actually i do remember the very first time when i when i was in one of our church services and i and it's it is quite rare that I would do like flips or something like that in a church service. But I, I, as I said earlier, that has happened. And actually I remember the very first time I did some sort of a crazy flip thing in the middle of the worship. And I was terrified because I was like, I'm probably in so much trouble. And I'm like, I couldn't help it. Like it just happened. Like I was so excited and you know, I just <laughs> found myself doing this flip and I was even actually holding this huge piece of material. It wasn't even silk. It was this huge piece of material. And I'm like, I'm still like, I don't know how that happened that I didn't hurt myself because I was holding the thing as I was doing the flip. And <laughs> so anyway, I was like, almost like panicking, like, oh no, like this is probably my last day here. Like they'll kick me out. And then the next morning I, I ran into our senior pastor, uh, Bill Johnson, at, like in the lobby and, and he walks straight up to me and he's like, are you the girl who did that flip in the service? And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> he remembers that. And he's like, he just, he just smiled. He's like, you know that moment? It was like, I went straight to heaven when that happened. And I had this crazy encounter with the Lord. And I was like, okay, thank God. Like, I guess I'm not in trouble after all. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of an interesting introduction for me. And like knowing, yeah, like knowing that there is this freedom, but at the same time, like having the sensitivity, like I wouldn't go and do stuff like that unless I really knew that that's what the Lord is doing. and 
as I said, like I would never go to a worship set thinking like, oh, today I'm going to do some flips. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's, it's always like going into worship with the heart. Like I want to follow what the Lord is doing today. And you know, it's, it's not my show. It's not my performance. It's not like, what can I do? But it's, it's just listening to what's on his heart for the moment and how can I serve in the moment and, and usher people into those places of encounter and what the Lord is doing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, one more story that I'm thinking, I once got invited to this church. Uh, they are, it's a Puerto Rican church, but it's here in the U S and they do all kinds of, they do like aerial dancing. Like they have these huge silks hanging from the ceiling and they do like aerial dancing in worship. Like I had never seen anything like that before, but like when I went there, I was amazed. And, and also like, it's so much part of their culture. Like it totally didn't feel like out of place or like, I think a lot of churches like that, that wouldn't feel quite fitting, but because it's, it's so much part of their culture already, like there's such a celebration and, and just so much color and so much sound and, all of so much movement already in the culture so it was like so fitting it was such a beautiful image for me like how like you know god wants to use every part of our cultures and you know sometimes the expressions can be different and they can be and i'm sure there are even like new dance styles that we haven't fully tapped into that god is wanting us to get to experience and <laughs> so yeah there's a lot to learn <laughs> you know might take a minute and see if anybody else has questions. I don't know who all. Looks like we got a few people on. I can't see. <laughs> yeah. If you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask your question. <laughs> oh, there are little ones too. Hi. Ah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we have a whole bunch of kids who dance with you now in the healing rooms as well. Hi. Can you say hi? We've got six little boys over here, so I'm trying to stay Aww. muted. <laughs> Aww. So good to meet you. We have we have a lot of fire catchers in um in our group that are stepping out in in dance and it's been so great to have hear your perspective and just to how you, the books that you've you wrote like uh encountering god through dance was such a great book to he, to um for those that have been misunderstood like i i keep coming back to that but i but i love that you actually express that um what was the process for you in writing it was it was it healing at all as you were writing it or had you already moved past that and then was just relaying that information? Um, I think it was in some ways both and like I, um, so I had actually been teaching on the topic for quite a while before I wrote the book. <laughs> and part of the reason I wrote the book was that I, people kept asking me like, do you have any books you can recommend? And I'm like, ah, not really. <laughs> like, I mean, there may have been some dance book, books out there, but I wasn't aware of them. And uh, so I, I kind of figured like, well, maybe I should just write down the things that I, I'd be learning and God, God's be highlighting for me. And um, so in a sense, like I, I had been processing a lot of it before I created a book out of the material. But at the same time, I think I had a lot of... Uh, personal encounters with the Lord as I was writing and able to process a lot of things. And so uh, it, it was a beautiful process. And, and actually like my writing process uh, was way shorter than I thought that it would be, which I was amazed because I think sometimes when we think like, Oh, you're going to write a book, like, Oh, that's going to take so long. And especially if you have any perfectionism in you, which, you know, the Lord is working on that side. <laughs> but, uh, 
but I'm typically so picky on like what I write and I'm like, if this is going to be published, like, you know, it has to be perfect. <laughs> but I pretty much like, I just wrote it and I was like, that's it. Like, it was like a baby that came out. I'm like, I just feel like that's it. And <laughs> um, I actually uh, wrote the book initially in Finnish. So, uh, and, and the Finnish book, it was called, uh, the, the title was uh, The Dancing Pride, that it's, it's actually the subtitle in the book right now, it still says it there. But my, uh, my publisher in America thought that people might think that it's a novel uh, and not a teaching book, if that's the uh, main title. So they still kept it, but they wanted it to be a subtitle. But that's how we originally wrote it in Finnish and it got published in Finland. And, uh, and then I, I translated it myself uh, into English because sometimes things get, things get lost in translation. And even like, I, I felt like some things I would express differently to Finnish people compared to English speaking people. And um, so I, I did the whole translation process myself, but actually then I ended up getting, uh, like I felt like God had done so much at that point that I ended up adding a whole new chapter and also like adding some more fresh testimonies that we had just seen God do through dance because I, I translated it after I had moved, moved to Bethel. So uh, that was kind of the process in the writing that I, so I had originally, I had the Finnish manuscript and, and then I, I worked on the English version afterwards. But, uh, but I do think writing, it is a beautiful way to, to process things as well. And, and I just, I always encourage all my dancers to like keep a journal of the things that the Lord is teaching you. And, and even things that you feel like the Lord is speaking to you when you're moving. And because I think sometimes we think like, Oh, I will remember it. But then a few days later, you're like, what was it again? <laughs> so I like kind of learning the discipline to, to write things down and, and keep a track. And, and I'm, I'm preaching this to myself too. Cause I, I, <laughs> I think I, I used to write even much more than I'm writing right now. And I'm, well, I'm actually now, I'm working on my third book, which I'm hoping to finish soon, but <laughs> I've been so busy recently that I, I, I haven't really put too many hours into that writing process, but I, that's going to be a book that's full of uh, testimonies and things that we've seen God do through dance. And so it's been a, a really, really, really fun, fun project to, to get to like collect all those testimonies and a lot of them are from our healing rooms but then i'm also like welcoming other people to submit testimonies that are dance related whether it's personal breakthroughs or what people have seen god do through dance in other people's lives or um so that's what i'm what i'm working on at the moment <laughs> yeah um so that was, I was going to ask you what you had, if you had anything coming up. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's been in process for quite a while now. So I'm, I'm actually hoping to take some time over the Christmas break to, to kind of finalize a few things for that. And yeah, <laughs> very cool. Um, so is there a way that um, if people want to contact you or someplace that they can find you online and uh, maybe, I don't know if you do visits and things like that to try and schedule a visit to a place? <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you remember how to spell my name, it's in the book. So my, my email address is uh, my first name, S-A-A-R-A -A -A dot, my last name, T-A-I-N-A -A, at Bethel.com. So that's pretty easy to remember and I also like I post quite a lot of dance videos and, and photos from here so I have an Instagram account and and that has kind of turned into a ministry page and it's, it's been so fun for me to see like how uh, and it's also like in some ways like I think an educational tool like that I'm wanting people to actually start to see what God can do through dance and and also see different groups of people like that you don't have to have 15 years of technique training in order to partner with the Lord in dance. And so my Instagram account is also just my, my first name and my last name. And, uh, and I do have a Facebook page too. I often post things both on Facebook and Instagram, but at the moment, my, my personal Facebook page is maxed out. 
but uh, I have it like a dancer page uh, where I usually post all the same things. So, so for, for that one, that's like an unlimited page. Um, but uh, yeah, if anybody's interested in having me to come over and do like dance, dance workshops or classes or anything like that, like typically email is the easiest way to get hold of me and um, yeah. So, uh, and I, I love doing that. I, um, I've been doing much more travel within the U S in this season, cause I'm, I'm currently kind of in the middle of my immigration process. So I haven't been able to travel internationally, but, uh, hopefully that will be sorted out soon, but, <laughs> but it's been a fun season also to get to travel within the U S and, um, yeah, I, I just last weekend I went to Seattle and took my, my third year intern. I have one, one student who is interning with me this year. So yeah, I, I like taking some of my dancers and typically my intern or if she can't make it. So then some of the dancers so that we can also demonstrate things together and, um, and share. So yeah. Very cool. Well, we will go ahead and um, post those links for everybody too. And um, just wanted to thank you for coming to our yeah. <laughs> little group. It was wonderful. And um, I think, are, are we ready to close in prayer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for this night. And thank you for the blessing of talking to Sarah and learning about her and getting to meet her. And pray that you would just shower your blessing on her, Lord. And I pray that you would just um, pour out your anointing on her for writing, Lord, that this project would move along smoothly too and we just stand with her on that and can't wait to hear what she has coming next in her stories and yeah so lord just bless everybody that's here tonight and everything that has reached us lord that needs to stay in our memory lord i pray that it would stay and that the seeds would be planted amen <laughs> Amen.